Wow. <clears throat> Manning, uh, will you come join me on the stage for a moment? Just make your way up here. In the meantime, uh, hey, would you keep praying for Chip Vicchio? Uh, Chip is recovering from the surgery, removed a tumor in his pituitary gland, and, and recovery has been very hard. I mean, he can't really rest. He can't breathe out of his nose yet. He wanted to be here today playing bass, and then like, <laughs> I can't. He didn't sleep at all last night. He can't do it. So keep praying for Chip. Uh, recovery's going well. Just slow. Keep praying for Chip. Get up here, big boy. I want you to know, uh, I want to introduce you to Manny. Uh, Manny is my neighbor, but he's also a new preacher in town. And he preaches at a Hispanic church in Lincoln. And uh, I just, I love this man already. And he's in his first month of being a preacher. And he's invited me in on kind of being a mentor to him. And I just want you to know who he is. I want you to be praying a blessing on him and his family and the congregation where he preaches that, uh, that just he would be a light to this world for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Lord, that would you bless this man? I love his humility. I love his heart. I love his commitment to you. Would you bless him and his family and the congregation he serves uh, to represent Jesus incredibly? Uh, Lord, thank you for our connection in the name of Jesus. Amen. couple things. I just feel like I need to remind you, when you exit the crossing, I want you, you know, when you get out to, you know, obviously most of you are turning right on Oyster Rocks Road, but when you get to Route 1, please just turn right. Don't wait for an opportunity to cross over. You know, with increased traffic, it's dangerous. Just turn right. Go north a little bit. Make your way over. Make the U-turn. And then go south if you need to go south. Or just go have lunch in Milton. Something. <laughs> Don't wait. Don't wait. Now, uh, Lord willing, our state troopers are going to be assisting in the near future again. And that's, a, yeah, that's, a, that's exciting. So, hey, just exit right. Go north. Please help the backup in the parking lot. Um, and one more little, you know, PR announcement. May 18th is our yard sale, our church-wide yard sale. May 18th. All right? Oh, so be cleaning out those closets and, you know, those attics and those garages for unwanted treasures. And the little asterisk there is, if it's junk, just go ahead and put it in the trash can, please. We only have little, two little dumpsters, you know. Uh, just If it's junk, go ahead and toss it. But if not, we'd love for you to donate. All the proceeds go to help the needy families for uh, our adoptive families for Christmas. And it, it's such a great thing. So just a quick reminder about that. Let's go. Our sermon series, right, for this month, let's go. And it really is all about anytime we come away with uh, some instruction from Jesus, when he reveals his want, when he offers a suggestion, when he issues a command, our response ought to always be, let's go. Let's go. I'm excited about this sermon series because it's really emphasizing, underscoring our reaching wider target. You remember our strategy, our vision, uh, three-year visions, three-year ministry strategy here at the Crossing is called REACH. And uh, three things, three targets that we want to succeed with. Reaching higher in two of you are awake. Was the coffee thing open this morning? Reaching higher in prayer and reaching deeper in relationships and reaching wider in influence. This sermon series is really underscoring that wider influence, reaching wider in influence. But think with me through this. A hundred years ago in our country, just a hundred years ago, really it was expected that you be a Christian. A hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, I, there was a social pressure that you at least go to church. There was. 
In fact, Peter Drucker, a famous business guru, said in 1937 when he went to get his first mortgage, the mortgage lender asked him, where do you go to church? He says, what's that have to do with me getting a mortgage? And the banker said, if you don't go to church, why would I give you a mortgage? How could I trust you? 100 years ago. My, how times have changed. Just 40 years ago, things were a little bit different. And just 40 years ago, there was, um, in our country, there was more of a live and let live approach. Now, the world saw Christians as still naive, living in the dark ages. But they liked our ethics. And they still concluded that the, the church and, and the Christians were, were they're good for the community. Because they liked our ethics and they liked our honesty and they liked our compassion. And it was kind of a live and let live. Today, is there not an increased disdain for followers of Jesus? Uh, and honestly, the world does not like our ethics. There's an increased disdain. Honestly, they can't stand us. And the world's philosophy, of, if you can't beat their principles, you attack their person. That's the world's stance. If I can't beat you in your principle, I'm going to attack your person. And we live in a culture, much like Rome's culture, where the, fir where the first church got started. Disdain for Christians. The Roman culture was polytheistic and totally secular. The Roman culture. Uh, in Roman culture, where the church got its start, it was so polytheistic. Everybody had their own gods. Every city had their own gods. Every business had their own gods. Every home had their own gods. And nobody thought that their gods was the god. And so what that meant is if you were from city A, you had your own gods and you worshipped your own gods. But if you ever traveled to city B, you would bow down and worship their gods too. Or it would be a huge breach in, you know, uh, just civil courtesy. And it would be such a huge insult to their people if you didn't bow down and worship their gods, uh, much less, you know, they believed you would incur the wrath of their gods if you didn't, and so you bowed down to their gods too. Everybody was free, happy, Roman culture. And then came along followers of Jesus. Oh, those Christians. You see, Christians came along and they started to believe that their God was the God. There was no other gods. All the other gods were fiction. Therefore, it was ungodly and unconscionable to bow down. And they didn't. The world hated them. They hated that. And so began persecution. You can't beat the principle, you're going to attack their person. And they hated Christians, and they tried to kill them, they ramped up persecution, and it was crazy. But here's the thing. As persecution increased, the church grew and grew and grew. When persecution was increased, the church grew like crazy. How? Why? I think we would be wise in our culture, since it's increasing disdain for us, we might want to ask that question a little more specifically. How and why? I'm so excited about the text I want to share with you today. It comes from John chapter 4. Uh, it's really the conclusion of a story. But in John chapter 4, we find Jesus having a conversation with the woman at the well. You remember? The woman at the well. It's midday. 
the heat of the day. And Jesus has this, he meets this woman and he has an incredible conversation with this woman and they talk about things like sin and worship, living water. In fact, during the conversation, Jesus reveals that he knows everything about her. Huh. Specifically that she's been married five times and is now living with her shag, you know, live-in boyfriend. Awkward. He knows everything about her and he still offers her grace. It's an incredible story. At the end of the conversation, he reveals to her very clearly, I am he. I'm the Messiah. That's where I want to pick up the story for our text today. This is so awesome. Verse 27. Just then the disciples returned, you know, they went into town uh, uh, for Chick-fil-A. So it wasn't Sunday. They returned and was surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Now get the picture. Here's Jesus, this lady, having a conversation at the well. The disciples come back into the picture and they make it awkward. They do. And it kind of is awkward. Jesus is talking with a woman. Jewish rabbis never really did that in public. And Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman. The Jews saw them as half-breeds. It was a racial, it was a racial thing. And Jesus was talking to an immoral Samaritan woman. Yeah, it's a little awkward, but no one dared ask. Uh, what are you doing? Look at verse 28. Then leaving her water jar. Interesting. That's why she was there, to get water. But leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and made their way toward him. Look at this, the conclusion. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I, I did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. We now have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Wow! Isn't that an incredible story? This is, wow. Now, at the beginning of John chapter four, this woman is in there introduced to us as, well, she is a mess of a woman, and that's saying it mildly. She is just, she is a hot mess. That's basically how I want to say it. She's a mess, but by the conclusion of the story, this woman, this woman, she is so effective at influencing people with Jesus. In fact, she won her whole town. All week, I've been pouring my study into this woman. I am so impressed with this woman. I love this woman. This is the wonder woman of reaching wider right here. This is. The, wow. She encounters Jesus for just a bit and that one encounter empowered her to reach huh, her whole town. How? How is she so effective? And, okay, why would they listen to her? That's the map for today's message. How was she so effective? And why did they listen? First of all, let's answer the question. How is she so effective? This is an incredible story. It's like miraculous. How was she so effective? Uh, the, here's the secret. The secret is her joy. The secret is found in her offer of joy. First of all, she offered a joyful expression. 
The text simply says, leaving her jar behind. That's an interesting detail that they put in there. She left her water jar. Why was she at the well? To get water. I mean, she, she, she just left it there and ran back into town. Why? She was so excited. She, you know, she was there to get water and she forgot all about why, why she was there. You ever go to the refrigerator and wonder, why did I come over here? Like, you know, all the time. Um, so I get something anyway. Um, she left her water jar and she went back into town. Why? She is so excited. She is so full of joy. She just encountered Jesus. She just received a new life, really. And she's so full of joy. I need to tell you, you can't hide joy. You really can't. If you're full of joy, if you are full of the Lord's joy, it, you can't hide that. And it just comes out of you. It just leaks out of you. It just splashes out of you. You can't help it. You can't hide joy. You can't hide real joy. And they see this woman come back, back in town with a demeanor they've never seen before. She is so full of joy. She, she offered a joyful expression, didn't she? The second thing I, I want you to know that she offered a joyful invitation. Come and see. And you can tell, you can just see it. You can see the smile on her face, almost a grin on her face. Hey, come and see. Come and see a man I, that told me everything I've ever done. Come and see. Simple, but joyful. You know it was a joyful invitation. Listen, next, Saturday, or next weekend is Easter weekend, right? Um, we have said that we're already praying. We're praying for a thousand plus next weekend. And in order to accommodate that, hey, we're going to have four services. We're going to have a Saturday night, five o'clock service, and then the three regular Sundays. Hey, I want to encourage as many of you, change your schedule, come Saturday night, only to serve other people, to create more room in our three regular Sunday services. I know Saturday night doesn't seem much like Easter. You know, just get over that and, you know, come anyway. Saturday night's going to be so awesome. Um, but if, if we have a thousand plus here next weekend, it will be because of our joyful invitations. Invite as many as possible. Hey, this morning I sent an e-blast out and the only thing it was was the electronic invitation to Easter. Hey, copy and paste that baby. Share it, post it, you know, e-invite, email it, whatever you, know, whatever you do electronically, you know, do it with that invitation. Actually, it's posted on Facebook too. Go to Facebook, like our page, copy and paste that thing, share it. Invite as many as people and just be joyful about your invitation. You know, kind of be excited about the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? <laughs> be excited about a church that believes in the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Joyful invitation. And then this third thing I see happening. She offered them a joyful narration. Or a story. Her story. When she was telling her story, she was so full of joy. In fact, her story, you know, come see a man. Told me everything I ever did. Could it be the Messiah? What, that's it? Yeah, that, that, that's all she had. <laughs> really? How much, how much doctrine, though, did she share with these people? I mean, how much, how much theology did she have in her to share with these people? Uh, well, maybe this much. You know, my best guess is probably Jesus spent like 30 minutes with her or so. You know she didn't go back into town and talk to everybody about the substitutionary atonement. You know that, right? She had no idea what that was. And she didn't share with them a bullet point list of theology. She didn't share with them a well-rehearsed presentation of the gospel. She just joyfully went back into town and told her story. And her story only had two parts. This woman was just so completely honest about who she was and so completely honest about who he was. Isn't that cool? That's the key. Two parts. The first part was this woman was just so completely honest about who she was. She didn't try to hide anything. Hey, I met somebody who told me everything I've ever did. She didn't even try to hide it. And, he's, and he offered me grace. 
And so the second part of her story was she just was completely honest about who he was. Hey, come and see a man. It just pointed right to Jesus. Come and see a man. Told me everything I've ever did. Everything, everything. And I mean everything. And he still talked to me. He, he still pursued me. He still wanted me. He offered me his grace. He offered me his spirit. He offered me eternal life. That's it. That's all she had. Wow. That's how she was so effective. Her joyful offer. Does that make sense? Okay, I got another question. This is, this is odd to me, actually. Why would they listen? I mean, why would they listen to her? They didn't like her. She stole a couple of their husbands. <laughs> No, really, why would they listen to her of this woman? They knew what kind of woman she was. They knew this was the kind of woman you don't bring home to mama. Why did they listen? Not only did they listen, they accepted the invitation and they went. Why? I'll tell you why. Joy's attraction a spirit of joy is so attractive. Joy is attraction. Hey, if you are full of joy, if, if the joy of your salvation is your strength, you are so full of joy and you can't help it. It just comes out. You're excited. You're joyful. It just oozes out. You, you couldn't even stop it if you tried. It just, it just happens, right? Right? She went back into town with a new attitude. She went back in town with a joyful spirit. She's never had a joyful spirit. And so the townspeople are like, huh, look at her. She's like bubbly. She's never been like that. She's bubbly. She's, uh, something happened. What's going on? We better check this out. Right? Right? Now, odds are this woman was fairly physically attractive. I mean, just look at her story, you know. But when she found the joy of Jesus, she was beautiful. She, on that day, became beautiful. Because of what Jesus did. In her. Amen? Joy's attraction. Can I share one more thing? Uh, why did they listen? Because of joy's offer. What you and I have in Jesus is an offer that is so incredible. Everybody wants it, really. Everybody wants it. Think about this. Joy's offer. Two things, really. Salvation by grace and communion with God. That's what, that's what Jesus offers. That's what the church offers. Salvation by grace and communion with God. First one, salvation by grace. Total forgiveness of everything in our past as a gift. Nothing you could ever earn, nothing you deserve, just Christ's offer. Total forgiveness. You, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me, totally forgiven. And that's what we can offer everybody. And, and then communion with God. That's really what's behind the forgiveness of all your sin and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Total forgiveness and his presence in your life. Communion with God. Not just getting God on your side. Not just getting God's approval in your life. Getting him doing life with you. A relationship with almighty God. Everybody would want that, right? Total forgiveness and a relationship with him. Joyful offer. You do believe that 
your salvation is a miracle, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about you. You being saved. You, believe, you know that's a miracle, right? You know you don't deserve that, right? It's a miracle. If you ever go to Mr. X and ask him, are you a Christian? And his response is, of course I'm a Christian. That's a Pharisee, have nothing to do with that dude. But if you go to Mrs. X, and, and by the way, Miss X really gets it. <laughs> she knows. It's grace. If you ever go to Mrs. X and say, are you a Christian? She's going to laugh. <laughs> Me, a Christian? I know, right? Funny, right? Uh, but yeah, by his grace, by his grace. And she laughs because it's kind of funny. Yeah, me, a Christian. Yeah. Let's land this baby this way. Got joy? No, seriously, I'm, I want you to look inside. I want you to evaluate yourself. Do you have the joy of the Lord? Listen, if you are rejoicing in the salvation of, of, of Jesus for you, if you know what you've received in him, you are full of joy. You, I mean, it's laughable, actually, that you're saved. <laughs> and you laugh, and it's full of joy. If you're full of joy, if you're enjoying the joy of your salvation, there, you, can't, you can't hide it. It just happens. It comes out of you. Talking about it is just easy. But if you're not really sharing your faith, it's, it's probably because you aren't living a joyful life. The secret's all about joy. And I know I'm talking to some people today honestly aren't living a life full of joy. And if you would conclude, man, my life, I've not been living, I've not been joyful. It, it, it's because one of two reasons. The first reason simply might be, if, if you're not experiencing a life of joy, it may simply be because you haven't received him yet. Joy is only the result of his grace. Joy is only the result of his salvation. Joy is only the result of his spirit in you. The fruit of the spirit is joy. So it's possible you've never received him yet. If you have never received Jesus yet, come to him. He wants to totally forgive you of every one of your sin. He wants to move in and do life with you. That's our offer. If you've never received Jesus, come. Come to him. Surrender to him. I want to, I want to share a biblical example from Acts chapter 8 of a guy who was not really full of joy, kind of rejected. If you know the back story, he's kind of, woe is me. I, just look what happens. This is such a great example. Then Philip, the preacher, by the way, when you read Acts chapter 8, he is so full of joy. Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. What's the good news? Uh, forgiveness is available, and he wants to move in and live, do life with you. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? He gave orders to stop the chariot. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. He just received Jesus and he just received the life of joy and he went on his way rejoicing. Maybe you've never received him. Surrender to him. It's the only way to have a life of joy. Or the second reason, if you're not living a life of joy, the second reason may be you had it at one time and somehow, somewhere along the way, you lost it. If that's you, maybe you ought to adopt King David's prayer this week. 
King David mentions a prayer in Psalm 51. And, and this is after a season of him being so selfish. The only thing he could see is himself. And he repents and he gets out of that. And here's his prayer in Psalm 51. Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Maybe that ought to be your prayer this week. If you're full of joy, you can't hide it, and it's just going to come out, and it, joyous invitations going to be happening like crazy. But listen, can I just ask you to do me a favor? If you're not full of joy, don't invite anybody. Uh, that's not good. I want to mention another tool we have for you on your way out, if you're interested. We have little baggies back there with some cards. There's like five cards in each baggie. They're just regular business cards for the church, just very general. And when you're inviting somebody, uh, just hand it to them. It'll be a little warm, fuzzy takeaway, and it'll be their reminder and joyful invitations. Joyful invitations are easy for people full of joy. Amen? Lord Jesus, thank you today. Thank you for an incredible story. I, this wonder woman at Reaching Wider. <laughs> Lord, would you, would you give us that same joy, her joy? And I pray, Lord, that we realize what you've done for us. I pray that we would leave here today just totally honest about who we are. We really are. And would you help us understand who you really are and what you've offered us. And may that lead uh, each of us and fill us with incredible joy.